Good morning. You are all so deeply in our hearts. Our hearts are just bursting being here with you. And while we, we lead a very devotional, mystical life, uh, very much like the Franciscans, um, for many years we have, have had a very public ministry like Jesus. He was like a, a public mystic, a rare public mystic who communed with with the Creator and then came to speak about what he heard. Wow, we're really blessed that we have a like a way shower that's so expressive. <laughs> and we feel very touched being here. Um, Coast came up right before just was was saying, wow, let's let's do this again next year, same time, same place. <laughs> and you have to understand for us, you know, we we love these expressions, we love these retreats and and there was a time when you, if you looked at our calendar year, we had so many retreats on the calendar. Uh, ranging from weekend retreats to a week long like this, all the way up to four weeks or six, six weeks. Um, we would do six week retreats even. And people were so changed uh, from the six weeks that they they would often come to us at the end and like say, what do we do now? <laughs> I mean, it's like, I feel like Neo in the Matrix. I've, now I'm unplugged, now what? <laughs> uh, we had one woman who came to one of our six weeks retreats in, in Mallorca and she had come and she had been diagnosed with cancer and um, she came and she just dove in and she, after six weeks, she completely went into a remission. The cancer just completely disappeared. And we've seen people, yeah, who've come to retreats uh, recently in Brazil with Kirsten. There was a woman who was, a, a young woman who was suicidal and they basically brought her to the retreat there in Brazil, and you should have heard her talking at the end of the retreat. She was just bubbling from a young woman who was suicidal and to just somebody who was bubbling like, oh, now I've got a reason to go forward. You know, it's that life-changing, really. And yet for us, as we go deeper, it's very, it's a very much of a mystical community. We are like the Franciscans, and the Franciscans would occasionally come out to a CC or come out to some of the towns, but but that wasn't their actual like day-to-day -day devotions. And so, I was telling Coase that yeah, for us. Next year, same time, same place, is like, it feels like a million years away. Uh, and, and yet, we do hear the prayer, so I want to ask all of you, please hold us in your prayers. I felt from Jesus this year, he kept saying, this, this is your year for Europe, and we miraculously followed and came over, and we have a center over here, and and we love you all, and we love you dearly, and we're just moment by moment praying and asking Holy Spirit and Jesus to tell us, listen and follow, tell us what you want, it's your plan. But uh, Helena had talked with the, the people here at the castle and they were saying, oh we're booked up all the way through the summer, we do have the same week <laughs> available. <laughs> uh, next year and so even the even the castle was telling us same time same place next year so you know that's that's how we pray we just pray and then coast 
ghost comes up, the, the castle says, so I have a pretty good feeling actually <laughs> about it. Uh, but again, for us that's like, yeah, wow. Yeah, we're just, we're in such prayer. And this morning the lesson of the day, and if any of you do the lesson of the day with, uh, for this particular day, but it's lesson 286, and I just looked at it today, and, and the first two sentences of the workbook lesson, Jesus puts an exclamation point at the end of the, each of the first two sentences, and I thought, I better read this today with everybody, because if I've, I've never seen a workbook lesson is the first two sentences start off with exclamation points. So it must be for the closing of our retreat and this lesson to be synchronized, this must be exactly what he is telling us with exclamation points. So he's like, like, please heed this, please pay attention. So, And the title of the lesson is one of the softest, sweetest, I mean, I remember, I just, when I read the title, I melt. I'm like liquid after the title, so I can hardly get to the exclamation points, because uh, I'm totally liquid. So I'll just read you the title and take a moment to turn liquid, and then we'll all go in after that. Lesson 286. The hush of heaven holds my heart today. Father, how still today! How quietly do all things fall in place! This is the day that has been chosen as the time in which I come to understand the lesson that there is no need that I do anything. In you is every choice already made. In you has every conflict been resolved. In you is everything I hope to find already given me. Your peace is mine. My heart is quiet and my mind at rest. Your love is heaven and your love is mine. The stillness of today will give us hope that we have found the way and traveled far along it to a wholly certain goal. Today we will not doubt the end which God himself has promised us. We trust in him and in our capital self, who still is one with him. Wow. So we could really feel you last night during the movie, before the movie, and then certainly afterwards. I know a lot of you just just stayed in place because it was you felt something very deep and and then already we've heard so many witnesses of of how impactful and life changing the movie had, was and also this whole week it, it's just been profound for all of us we all have deepened we've all gone deeper into something that is beyond the, the personal daily perception of the world. We've just sunk inward 
through our desire. We, we came because we desired to deepen and we have deepened. And, uh, and let's get a chair up here for Soren. I would love Soren to come up and be part of this. It's not often you can talk to the, movie, the characters in the movie mm. and you have a chance to do that. I don't want to miss that <laughs> chance today. <laughs> and because we only have the limited amount of time this morning, I don't want to let this slip by as an opportunity. So, yeah, I think Soren is such a big part of the movie project and such a witness for the willingness to open up in the face of, of one of the strongest defense mechanisms, which is like to close down, to shut off, to isolate, to not talk about feelings, to not be transparent. And then, just like Francis Romero had a prayer, and really everyone in the movie uh, had a prayer uh, th for healing and Francis actually got to witness those prayers and everyone, she'll tell you, everyone received the answer to their prayer during that mystery school. But with Soren here, uh, we have a microphone available and, and Soren has a microphone. I think people are very interested in your experiences, how, how you're feeling now and, and the impact that that all had for you because it was like the turtle. You took your baby little steps and strides first even to, to host uh, Francis and Jenny was, was actually a, quite a huge stride and then the others have followed and each point you had a decision whether to take another stride or to recoil back. And all, all of us can relate to that when we have opportunities. Uh, do I take what seems to be a risk and trust or do I move back into what seems to be a comfortable position of, of not doing anything when I'm prompted in a way. So maybe you could just share a little bit about that. Yeah, as you mentioned uh, earlier, I I was really hurt from my former community, and uh, and the extent of how much asleep I was, I was not aware of that. And I think the biggest blessing being part of this is to become more aware of how much asleep I've been. And I mean it's I mean it's opening all the time that I have to do nothing but I think I have to do something to be, be approved, to have value, to know something, and all this. And I meet all these b beautiful people here and uh, in the community, and and especially Francis has been a such a loving symbol for me that I've had the trust to open up again to love and it's like when you're together in this purpose you meet you, know, you meet the people you need to meet <laughs> and um, 
I think the deepest hurt I've had is, you know, is these intimate relationships, and um, and I had, you know, I just it was just too painful these intimate relationships. So I totally stopped. You know, it was like I had to simply let that not be part of my life anymore. And and the more I'm part of this community, it seems like I'm provided with the people that I need. And um, and I'm beginning to have faith that this is so. <laughs> that even though you know I meet people that you know I, I get pissed off and uh, and uh, you know I cannot figure out why but then suddenly you know, oh my god this is my father and my mother you know um, and then and the thing is then I cannot do anything about it apart from praying for Forgiveness, you know, for, you know, I have to forgive the contempt my mother had for my father, you know. <laughs> and uh, so, <laughs> Vipa. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think the movie project was um it, it simply opened my heart again. And thank thank you, Nita. Um. Yeah, and also wanna say thank you to David and Francis, and um, I mean, I, I was really into the first question also when I arrived here, you know. I think it was actually me who called Francis a Chinese emperor. <laughs> <laughs> it was good to say it. But there's something to, I mean, I have still, you know, a lot of, you know, fear around being true to what I feel, because somehow I, you know, it was not good in my environment to be, you know, speaking up. So that's, you know, I'm still working on speaking up and uh, be true to you know what I feel I think I think it is good to just just have a few words before um, the song and before we really close it up because you can stay here sorry <laughs> <laughs> Because this is such a huge week in every way for for all of us, you know. I think I just feel like it deserves a few moments at the very end that we can just be with ourselves and with the Holy Spirit. And I know that sometimes after a while the ego is tempted to come back and discount all the miracles, just saying, oh, it's nothing. But I think today, in the last few minutes, let's just just be the witness for ourselves, and we're not going to push away miracles. 
And that is what we devote our mind to, just wanting to see that miracles are possible and are all around us for the last week. I hear from many of you things are just falling in places without your effort. And suddenly, because you step back enough and relax enough, you, be this, you become this effortless witness of the Spirit's work. And that is truly the miracle. I think at the earlier stage of my journey, and probably even today, I always feel like David is like this symbol in my dream. And sometimes I think if I dream in the night dreams and all these characters, I bet nobody would tell me that I'm dreaming and you need to wake up because I dream them up. But somehow there is this one symbol and just consistently reminding me, it must be that I'm pretty close to waking up already. Some light has shined and I give some characters these roles to remind me to wake up. I must be very close, like at the, the breaking point somehow. Yeah, so I just think this week is so orchestrated and so divinely orchestrated. And let's move forward from this moment on, just hold each other as nothing else but a symbol of waking up and, f and symbol of our own devotion. Like We must be at the verge of waking up. We must be so devoted that we call for us all these witnesses to remind ourselves. And the good news is that when we are with the Spirit, the ego has no power, absolutely no power. This, Jesus actually says in the Course that do not think your mistake will hold back the progress, will hold back my teaching. There is no mistake that matters. So I think We share our gratitude to you all for coming and for open your heart together with us. And we want to end this retreat with a song called Light Up because that's what we want moving forward. Just light up. <laughs>